For my next project, I'm going to be making two rustic looking end tables um, for either side of a couch. I'm going to have drawers um, in the front as well as doors. They're going to be made mostly out of reclaimed materials. I'm kind of switching up the, my um, process for making these videos. Um, after that cherry bed series, which I think will end up being like six videos at a half an hour piece, I just think that that's a, a big commitment for DIYers to make to watch that many videos. So what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to do a couple things at a time and instead of talking about it beforehand, each step, combining three or four steps and then showing the finished product, I think it will cut, I think you'll still get the same amount of information, it just won't take as long to get it. So I had this rough piece of barn wood, it was an old joist, and I split it down on my table saw into eight equal pieces, so that way I have all of my legs. I broke up that barn wood based on um, needing to get eight pieces out of it, so they're about 24 inches tall. They're a little bit taller than what I need, but I usually trim stuff down at the end. They're three inches wide by about two inches thick, and I wanted them wide because the side's going to have a panel, but I wanted to see that nice grain of that barn wood on the sides. So the way I have these set up is the rough dimensions of the finished table. They can't be any taller than 24 inches. They're 24 inches now, but I have to trim them to allow for the top. By 20 to 21 inches deep and 14, uh, 15 to 16 inches across. It's nice when a customer gives you windows of measurements, especially when using older materials, just because that's a, an inch is a lot of leeway other, um, in either direction. It just makes life a lot easier. Next step for these is I'm going to be making rails to connect the bottoms and the tops and then there will be a floating panel on the inside. The back's going to be made of tin and the front will obviously be a drawer and a door. Um, I made two mortising jigs to make this process a lot easier since each side will have an inside mortise top and bottom as well as one on the outside top and bottom so that means each one of these legs is going to have at least four. The ones in the front will have extra ones to separate the door from the drawer. So I made this jig in order to make that process faster. And I'm going to put a link in the description. I'm going to have a separate video showing making the jigs so this video series isn't super long and I can refer to it in other videos. For all my rails that are going to hold this whole thing together, I'm using this cherry. These are two chunks left over from the slabs I bought for the rails of the cherry bed I just made. And they weren't surfaced. I surfaced the top and the bottom and I jointed one side with the jigs I made. 
and once again I'm going to have a, just those jigs and surface wood. I'm not going to go through these processes in every video. It just seems kind of redundant, especially for people that regularly watch these videos. So now I'm going to rip this down into strips, and I think in order to get the most bang for my buck, I'm going to rip these down into an inch and a quarter strips. They're an inch and a half thick, so that will give me almost squares, nice thick squares to run in between all these pieces. And I want to do that, and I think I'm going to cut a practice tenon so I know the exact size mortises I need to make on all of these. I have all my pieces lined up in two sets, the back set, the front set, and I have tape telling me which one's front of that first set, which one's the rear, and the outside of each. There's going to be so many mortises to cut on these, I want to keep them lined up like this to make life easier. I cut this practice tenon. It's going to be a three-quarter inch tenon. I'm only going to have shoulders on the two sides. I'm not going to have shoulders on the top. It's about an inch and a half wide by about an inch deep. With those measurements I was able to mark my first mortise. I came down an inch because remember these are too tall. So my mortise is going to end at 23. I'll probably trim part of this top to because I'll probably have a three quarter inch top so I'll leave a little quarter inch here trim it down and then I centered it based on my width and I came down that inch and a half so now at this mark I could go put that in my jig get my jig set up and then since this is a centered mortise I should be able to go through and cut every single one of my top mortises which will be eight total So I mounted a straight board which is actually a scrap piece of that cherry using my clamps and the piece I'm going to be routing can sit on top of that. So this clamp is holding this in place so all I have to do to switch them out is loosen this clamp, slide this out, slide a new one in and tighten that clamp instead of messing with these ones. And then it was actually really easy to set up my stop the same exact way. So that stop's going to make it so each piece lines up exactly the same and that could stay in place for all of the cuts. Window, you could see how I lined the window up turning these knobs in the back to center it over my yellow piece. And then you won't be able to see it when I put the router in there, but I put the router in there, I slid it to this edge, moved the stop and tightened it, and then did the same thing for this side. Slid the router so it cuts right up to the edge, moved the stop and tightened it. So I cut all those first mortises and you could see them. They turned out pretty near perfect. Um, the machine with the router in there actually cuts them faster than I thought it would, especially since I have a junky no-name router bit in there. I use that one versus my Freud router bit because it's a little bit deeper, so I was able to get a little bit of a deeper mortise using that bit. Once you have it set up, it works seamlessly. The only problem I had with it, and this is just because I'm using reclaimed lumber, since some of the tops aren't perfectly square, every once in a while I had to take a shim and shim right up here so it didn't rock, but that's more so because of the lumber I'm using versus the jig. So I definitely cut all of these in less than a half an hour. I think I might film all eight bottoms just to see how fast it is to, to cut them. But right now, shy of buying a domino for something like this, I think this might be the fastest way to cut these. So with my tops cut, I'm going to now cut the bottoms. And I want a three inch leg on bottom. So I drew a line, which is hard to see in this rough lumber, and a rough mark of where I want that to start. So now I can put this in the same exact way I'm using it. And all I have to do is 
move my stop over until that yellow mark hits the edge of my bit, clamp the stop in place, and then I could do all eight of these. film cutting all eight of those mortises, I switched the camera view halfway through and each set took about four minutes, which means it takes about a minute to cut each mortise, um, which I'm pretty happy with. And the f more so the fact I'm happy with is how uniform and perfect they are. That's always the problem with mortises. The time's not so much of an issue because they're a nice solid joint and worth the effort. It's more so that if you're cutting them by hand or even like when I would do them on the drill press, they're not always um, identical. And these are about as identical as you can get. So I have two more to cut on the insides and then I'll, on the fronts I'll have another two to cut. We're not going to worry about those just yet. So I spent the time to go through and mark where all of those are going to go on each piece. And that's because I want that frame in the front to be flush with the front. I want the frame in the back to be flush with the back, which means these aren't going to be centered. They're going to be a quarter inch back from the front for, to allow for the shoulder of your tenon and then the three quarter inch tenon. So I went through and marked them all. I went through and marked them all by wrapping lines from the top and bottom of my mortise to the side and then it was always going to be dependent on which one you're doing the new mortise was always going to be the furthest away from the old mortise and then I just kind of did the same thing quarter inch and then the three quarter inch which I ended up putting an inch mark here to get that three quarter inch tenon I colored in with the yellow lumber marker just so when you're sliding all these underneath your jig you'd be able to tell right away if you're putting it in the right way because there's a lot of ways to mess this up now. So that means that instead of two sets, I'm gonna have to do four sets. I'll be able to cut the diagonals first. I'll be able to do, so those two, as well as these two, then I'll have to adjust the jig and I can cut these diagonals, those diagonals, and then I'll have to do the same thing for the bottoms, but moving that depth gauge again. So it's going to be four sets instead of two sets, but as you can see with the adjustments I've made on this, it's really easy to make quick adjustments and only about a minute to cut each one. I have those four cut and now I could do the other four tops simply by now that I have that weight at the uh, now that I have my fence at the height I need it I could just move put that on there and move the carriage full forward to it lines up with my yellow mark and cut these other four and then to save time on filming once that's done I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the bottom cut four and four I will cut these ones first since the fence will already be set up for it and all I'm going to have to do with this one is move the stop and it will be in the same position.
With all those inside mortises cut, I just have to cut two more on the fronts, and that's going to be the rail that will separate the uh, door from the drawer. And I'm making the drawer about four inches. Usually standard size on these smaller cabinets is about that, probably four to six. So I marked it the same way I did on the top, all the other ones. It's an inch in and then another quarter set, which gives you my three quarter groove. Do the same thing on the other side. Now the right side of this one and the right side of the second one, I could just slide right in because that's already set up to cut the ones towards the front on this side. I'll just have to adjust the depth stop, but the depth's the same for both of these. So I'll cut these two and then the other ones. So I think in total I had 36 mortises and I caught all of them in a couple hours and so you can't really ask for anything better than that and more most importantly like I said yesterday the uniformity of them is is critical in building stuff like this and from the dead eye they look perfect you'll find out if they're really perfect when you go to put those tenons in place but for now pretty happy with it